we are going to get underway here. And I know the weather's looking like it could, might rain, so some people are staying home. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Anyway, uh, God is good, and we're expecting great and mighty things happening today. Amen. Is this really quiet, or is it just me? No, it's a little soft. I'm going to turn up a little bit. Let me as well before I, before I get going too much. Thank you. I think I've got the same work in now. I hope. <laughs> Well, praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. 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 How many of you know God is good? All the time. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. All the time, God is good. That's right. Praise the Lord. It's going to be a good day. It's going to be a good week. Yes. And uh, I'm seeing it's going to be sunshine even. So that's fantastic. You know, no matter what's going on in this world, as Christians, we can believe that God's going to do something good on our behalf every day. Amen. And I believe that. Yes. Yes. I believe that every day Amen. he wants something good to happen to us. No matter what's going on in the world, it doesn't really matter. Amen. So just look for it. Be looking for it. You know, a guy named Warren Wiersbe, anybody ever hear of him from years and years back on the radio? Uh, Warren Wiersbe would get on the radio and he'd, he'd say, twice a year he'd say, we're going on a God hunt for 30 days. I don't know why it was 30 days. I like to go on a God hunt every day. What a God hunt is, is looking for what God is doing that day in your life. And uh, believe it or not, if you actually start looking to see what God is doing, you're going to see things he's doing. Amen? Amen. Uh, Amen. Yeah. That's right. And, and start so, a God journal. Yeah, a God journal. Yeah, you just have a God journal. journal. You can fill out the whole thing, you know, yeah, in yeah. no time flat. If you're just looking. You know, but you've got to, so Warren Warriors, we call that a God hunt. And uh, so I go on God hunts all the time, uh, every day. So I'm always looking for God in something. And also divine appointments. I, I love what I call divine appointments. You know, I, I always ask for divine appointments so I can share the gospel with someone and share Jesus Christ with them share his power, share his love, but I also believe in divine appointments for us personally. God has divine appointments for us, for us for, uh, you know, prosperity, uh, for peace, you know, for deliverance, for all kinds of things. Uh, those are divine appointments for us as well. And sometimes uh, it's just somebody that you're going to meet that will become a long, a long-time friend, you know, a friend for the rest of your life. You never know. Or someone you're going to meet that later on will pay, play a big part in your life. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. these are things that God does for us all the time. And we just need to be looking for them. Amen? That's right. Let's Amen. begin in prayer. And then we'll uh, get into some of the uh, announcements. Father, we are thankful for this time to get together with you. To worship you. To bless you, Lord, as you bless us. Lord, to get into your word. Found and learn today, Father. We thank you, Father, that you are doing awesome things in this community, and Lord, we get to be part of it. We are so thankful, Father, for everything that you do every day for us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. So, we have some announcements, not many, actually, today. Uh, so, we're going to start in one minute. We will if this works. Oh, that's going out of it. Uh-oh. This is going to go. Well, I've got to change the battery again. Yeah. These batteries seem to go bad on me pretty quickly. So everybody can just bear with me for a moment. Okay, so I was going to do some trivia as part of mine, and so I was struck from Pastor Dave. <laughs> Tell me. Do you know any first place winners at the Mushroom Festival for the Mushroom Hunt? Who's my... Do you know if you know of any? Okay, well, I want to show you, we have a winner in our midst. <laughs> and they won this as their trophy. I cannot remember if there was any other winnings. 
That was the biggie. Oh, we got money with it, too. Did you? I was yeah. thinking you might have. In 2008, the 47th National Morale Mushroom Hunt Contest, Pastor Dave won. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's a little bit of tri trivia about your pastor. Right. How many uh, mushrooms? I was just going to look at it. I think it's out there. Oh, it's not. A, I mean, it may have been in the article, but I only kept the. I believe it was six hundred and some like six hundred. Wow! Wow! And that was when it had gone down. It used to be a lot more than that, but wow. two thousand eight there was only six hundred. Yeah. We only had it. That was just just for fun, fun since now. it was mushroom festival. And so, uh, yes. Yes. but you know, that's not bad. We were up for two hours. That's promising. Saturday and, and found zero. So. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Things have gone down a little bit in the mushroom Let category. Okay, it's still not working. This is not good. What happened to me? Um, what happened to my battery after all? Yeah. 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 That's amazing. You're right. Yeah. You're right. I don't think I've ever found more. <laughs> <laughs> You've never found a mushroom? <laughs> well, see, the way the mushroom hunts is going on this morning, right, right about now, they, they start heading out to the secret hunting grounds, which everybody in the world knows about. But anyway, uh, they leave at 10 o'clock and they head out to the secret mushroom fields. Just a couple more comments. Okay. For anyone online, Boyne City has a big mushroom festival, and this was the weekend, and that's why we were doing the trivia right now. Um, second thing, that is how Pastor Dave paid for our marriage license. <laughs> About 40 years ago, so 42 wow. almost. Oh, yeah. And so I thought that was real cute. He got mushrooms and sold them. And, and anyways, another little pastor trivia. Well, the thing about the, the mushroom, uh, it's Morale Mushroom Festival. It's a national Morale Mushroom Festival. This used to be the morale capital of the world, but it isn't so much anymore. However... Um, it's still fun. I love those things. They taste absolutely delicious. So if somebody's found tons of them and you don't want them, I'll take them. Praise the Lord. So, <laughs> but anyway, uh, that was 2008. That was like 13 years ago. And so uh, anyway, uh, 13 years ago is a long time ago. And back then, I still had mushrooms. Like I said, I got 600 and some of them. Yeah, and, uh, but when you go out, and, you know, they, they uh, shoot off a gun and everybody takes off running into those woods. And everybody wants to get ahead of everybody else, but I was always faster than everybody else. So I would run up way ahead of them, and then I'd turn around and go back to the beginning. And then I'd find out, look, everybody ran past them, you know, and I just went back and got them. Yeah, that's how I went. And I always made sure that when it was almost over, I was real close. Because if, you, if you're late, then you're mushroom hunter. Yeah. So you had to be real close to get back in. Yeah. So uh, in time. So it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. And uh, I think my uh, my brother Tom won one time. And I think third place, I think. And my brother Tim might even enter that mushroom festival. Tim, did you enter the mushroom festival before? Did I do what? Did you ever enter the mushroom festival? Yes. Did you win? Third. Third. Okay, so hey, we gotta keep up the tradition. Anyway, uh, I decided I didn't want to go out and run in front of everybody this year, so I did not. But especially since I didn't get any mushrooms on, I went out yesterday and there weren't any. So praise the Lord. Anyway, let's move on here. We're already about quarter after here. I don't want to lose too much time here. This is supposed to be working. Oh, there we go. Go backwards. The Bible study. All right, now it's working. I will study this Wednesday, 6.30 uh, p.m. Uh, soon, it's starting to get warm, so soon we're going to be doing this outside. And so uh, we're expecting to be on a pontoon boat uh, not long from now. And so we're going to be doing this study outside. And so everybody, of course, is welcome to come to it. We would love to have everybody at the Bible study. Praise the Lord. And we have, you say, we have more people watching uh, the uh, Bible study online than we have watching the service. So uh, so I think that it must be interesting to them. If it's interesting to them, it should be interesting to all of us, right? Yeah, so, amen. That's right. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And we move on here. This is our tithing and giving declaration. And the reason I do this is because it's important that we declare something. You know, we instead of just throwing money into the plate, 
Uh, it's, yeah. We don't have an entrance fee, okay? There's no entrance fee. A lot of people put, think of uh, tithes and offerings as an entrance fee. It is not an entrance fee to come to church. You can come to church for free. I was just asking about the table in the back, you know, if we were selling books back there or what, and I said, the table in the back that's got Jesus on it is free, because everything Jesus gives us is free, right? The table on the other side, though, is not free, but we do have a little bookstore. But uh, church is free, right? You don't need to pay to come to church. But tithes and offerings are for our benefit. Not to, I'm saying our. I'm talking about your benefit, my benefit, whoever's giving. It's for our benefit. Uh, it's not, I mean, it helps the church. Yes, it pays the bills. But uh, but also, you know, the Bible says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. But it requires giving in order to receive. And so uh, that's the reason that that we do that. But when you give, you should also say something about it. You know, we have a little sign at, at, the, at the plate there, at least we used to, that says, name your seed. You know what that mean? If you're giving, what are you believing for? You know, just when you when you put your, your offering into the plate, name it. Say, this this is for whatever I'm believing for. And, and the Bible says, and with the same measure that I give, it will also be given to me. And so, we need to uh, realize that. We need to understand that. And uh, so when we give, we, uh, we make sure that, uh, you know, that God's hearing our prayer. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Anyhow, tithing and giving declaration. Let's do this together. Because I am a tither and a giver, the windows of heaven are open to me. And God rebukes the devourer for my sake. I am blessed financially and receive a blessing that I cannot contain. I do not worry about lack, knowing God supplies all my needs richly and abundantly. Therefore, I am able to sow freely and liberally. I choose to sow cheerfully, generously, and bountifully, knowing I will reap bountifully. I have in abundance every favor and every earthly blessing. And all my needs are met, and I abound in every good work. Because I obey him, the Lord blesses everything I put my hand to. He grants me abundant prosperity. He makes me the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. The blessings of God are chasing me and overtaking me. Because God loves to see me prosper, I am believing him for jobs and better jobs, Advancements, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, God ideas and strategies, debts paid off, expenses decreasing, blessings and increases, financial freedom and breakthroughs. I guess that's it. That's pretty good, huh? <laughs> that's pretty good. You know, when we're believing for those things, God will come through. So we're going to pray over the tithes and offerings and uh, just believe that God is going to bless them. Father, we thank you, Father, that when we give, we can't outgive you, Lord. You always give back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give unto our bosom. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, for all, all that you're doing this morning. And blessing each and every person that has given, each person that's going to give, each person, Lord, that, that blesses you continually, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. So we're going to do a little different song today that you may not have... You've heard on the radio, but you may not have heard us singing here. It's called Grace of Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. We are ready. Praise the Lord. Let's stand as we begin the first song and then we can. i 
So how do we show we are Christians? How do we show we are disciples of his? By loving people. So, you know, you can pick out a hundred examples a day where you have a chance. If you drive, someone's going to cut you off sometime. Someone's going to take the parking spot. You will get yourself all set up to have. So it doesn't matter. You're going to get offenses. We've got to learn. One thing about ducks that I've always liked is they can get wet and they just brush it off. Well, we got to almost become a duck. We've got to brush it off. And we can't see it as an offense. If you work, you're going to come across someone who's going to offend you. Or if you have any business dealings, someone will offend you somewhere. It's going to happen. The devil will try to arrange a scenario that you know. I mean, he knows our weaknesses in the aspect that he, his job is to take every Christian down with him. Well, you can't do that. Because God says it rains on the just and the unjust alike. But he will deliver the righteous from everything that comes against them. So, what makes this disciple? Learning. Someone who is a pupil. Uh, and, a learning, and, and a learner, this is a, an action word I want you to understand. To be a disciple is an action word. You're learning, you're taking in, you're doing it. Okay, so... Um, this brings up one question. What about evil people intending to do evil? I've heard a lot of talk about that over the last, um, well, since November. Okay, no no comments as to where and why I'm saying November, <laughs> but you get the message. There's been lots of comments about distinctive evil. Okay, so let's talk for half a second. You have to determine, is it spiritual? If it is spiritual... You take your God-given authority through the Word of God, and you dismiss it. It's literally that simple. If it is a man, okay, this gets a little, little catchier. Number one, you got to forgive them, because you only noticed because you were offended by something they did. So, number one, forgive them. Number two, pray for them. Easiest way to pray for someone that's really getting under your skin Salvation. Because if it's a blatant evil, they're not saved. Somewhere in there, they're not saved. However, you want to be real careful not to judge the heart. I, 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 okay, an example of that. Someone with mental issues. We do not know where things end and begin in a person's life. We must leave that to God. Okay, but we can always forgive and pray and move on. All right, so... For unforgiveness. Let's talk real quick. That keeps us bound to the person. We can't stop thinking about them and about how they've offended us. So how do we forgive? It's a choice. There was an old Nike commercial that said, just do it. <laughs> just do it. That's how we forgive. We just do it. All right, so in conclusion, challenge yourself to forgive someone this week. So, that brings up a question. Do I have to go to them and tell them? That's between you and God. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. God knows the full situation. He knows whether it will be make things worse, or whether it will make things better. Many, we, we've, we have many stories where going to someone set them as free as it ever did us. And, but that's a thing between you and God. Only he can answer that one. So, there you go. That's your verse this week. And your challenge. Praise the Lord. Thank you. I always love that word when it comes forth. Uh, many, 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 many times. Um, she's actually been doing a preamble to my message. But uh, not today. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is good. So, I'm going to be talking a little bit today about things that are coming our way. Things that are coming. We are living in a time right now where things are happening kind of quickly. Uh, we're seeing prophecies coming 
coming uh, to pass much quicker than we have in the past. And the Bible says in the last days that knowledge is going to increase. And, uh, you know, up until about 150 years ago, knowledge hadn't increased. I mean, it pretty much stayed the same. And uh, maybe it was a couple hundred years ago now, I don't know, because I'm old now. So, but anyway, it wasn't all that long ago, maybe 150 years ago or so, that uh, people were still going using horse and buggies, right? After thousands of years, they were still using the same mode of transportation that they'd been using from the beginning. I mean, think about that. And now it might have increased a little bit. I mean, after all, they did learn how to start a fire <laughs> and build some wheels. But I mean, basically, knowledge hadn't really increased much. But in the last 150 years, knowledge has increased. And in the last 10 years, knowledge is now, they say, doubling every day. Every day. So it makes sense that things are going to happen faster and faster and faster. And so some things are good and some things are bad. You know, uh, Bob was saying to me this morning as we were talking about uh, recording and going online and stuff, and he says, well, wasn't all that long ago. We couldn't do that. <laughs> we couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. And so that was a good thing to happen, you know. We, we can reach people. And by the way, welcome everybody that's online today. We appreciate you being there and listening and watching. Uh, it wasn't all that long ago. We couldn't do that. I mean, we only went online a couple of years ago here at the church. And uh, most people, I think we're the only one in town doing that. When COVID hit, we had already been online. And so we, we went from maybe 100 people watching online to 500 almost overnight. And, uh, and then slowly it started coming down as more and more churches started getting online because everybody realized they had to be. If they were going to have church, they had to be online. Well, that really isn't the truth. I mean, that's what people thought was the truth. The truth was that our governor never shut down the churches in Michigan. We all could have been in church, right? Uh, but people didn't know that. It's kind of funny because uh, someone asked me if I wanted to get in on a lawsuit where a bunch of churches were getting together and, and they hired an attorney already so that they could uh, sue uh, the Michigan government, the Michigan governor, to make them allow church services again. And I said, you've got to be kidding. You actually pay money to a lawyer to do that. That lawyer, if he's any good at all, knows for a fact that our governor never shut down the churches here in Michigan. <laughs> but people ran from the churches, right? They ran. And so everybody figured, well, I've got to be online if I'm going to reach my people. The people should still be in church, even here. You know, our churches all look this way. And it shouldn't be like that. Um, because we need, the Bible says, as, the, as we see knowledge increasing like that, as we see, see things happening toward the, what we call the end times, we need to be in church more, not less, more. We need to be in church every time the doors are open, every, this church should be full. Every church should be. But it's not that way. Amen? And so, uh, Today we're going to be talking about things that are coming that are going to affect us, and maybe within the next year or so. There will be some things affecting us pretty soon, some things later than that, but I think it's important that we know what they are so that we can be ready when they do happen. Praise the Lord. Can I get this thing adjusted? Thank you, Lord. Turn to Matthew chapter 24. Everybody got their Bibles? Amen. <laughs> Heard somebody say amen. All right. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Good. A lot of people don't uh, don't look at the Bible as much anymore. They are actually becoming dusty because <laughs> they're not looking at them because they have their Bible app on their phone, which I'm not against Bible apps. You know, I when I'm reading my Bible in the mornings, I keep my Bible app right close to me because what I want to do is I want to look at the words in that. So I don't just read it. I study it every morning. And so I keep my Bible out there, and I'm glad I got a Bible out. It used to be years ago, I had this really thick, and I still have it, big, big book called a concordance. 
And so oh, yeah. every time I wanted to find the word, I had to go in, find the word, find the number, then I had to go back to another part of the book and, yeah. and find that and find what the definition really meant. That was called, was called a Strong's Concordance. It's still great. Yeah. I still use it occasionally, but most of the time, you know, I just use my Bible app. So <laughs> another good thing that came, you know, with, with knowledge increasing, right? Our Bible apps. So, uh, so I'm using this thing too called a projector that we didn't have 150 years ago and putting the Bible scriptures up here. Another great thing, right? With a program called Proclaim that wasn't available. So there's, like I say, there's a lot of things coming, some good and some not so good. So let's read it. Uh, start with verse 3, Matthew 20, 24, start with verse 3. Now as he, Jesus, sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Now Jesus had just told them that the temple would be torn down. And so they wanted to know when. So tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Now that's a loaded question when you're asking the Son of God. Amen. So he takes some time for that. And we're going to read about it. So Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. Well, we could preach for five weeks on this one. <laughs> Take heed that no one deceives you. People are being deceived everywhere right Social now. Media, yeah. You think that might have been for this time, this age? Amen. Mm -hmm. Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. And you will hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So these are the things he's saying is going to happen before the end, okay, right now. So there's going to be wars and rumors of wars and a lot of other things. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Now let me stop there for a moment. So nation against nation is countries, different countries coming against each other. Kingdoms against kingdoms is internal in a country. Civil wars, okay. We have one. This was written way before our big civil war. We may have another one, but other countries have done the same thing. They've had civil wars in their countries quite a bit. So the Bible says that was going to happen. And there will be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in various places. By the way, pestilences are also, you can call them pandemics, okay? Mm -hmm. Viruses and so on. And these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Now he's talking to the people that are following him. He's talking to the Christians, okay? And he says, they will deliver you up to tribulation, and they'll kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. We'll get into that a little bit more as we go through this. And then many will be offended. And they will betray one another and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Now let me stop there for a moment. Do you think lawlessness is abounding in the yes. world? I mean in the world. Yes. Or we can just take our nation. But yes, it's definitely doing our nation, but it's all happening in the world. And because of that, many people will grow cold. What's talking again about is the Christians. Because of that, the Christians will start pulling away. And, uh, and they'll come against one another. I said, he who endures to the end shall be saved. You know, I was so surprised on uh, January 6th when a couple million people, mostly Christians, got together in Washington, D.C., Almost 99.99% of them were peaceful. And yeah, they were lied about. And when I got back, I'm people, Christian people, I mean, came against me like crazy, saying, Christians shouldn't do this. People are coming up with a new definition of Christians, right? Why shouldn't Christians go to the Capitol and pray? Amen. For the leaders. That's right. I and mean, that kind of seems like a natural thing that Christians should do, yes? yes? That's right. Christians yes. are attacking yeah. Christians in this day and age. It's kind of sad. Yeah, very sad. And 
this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. That's a really important scripture. It says, unless this gospel is preached to everybody in the world, I'm not coming until it takes place. Jesus said, everybody's got to hear the gospel or the good news. Everybody has to have an opportunity to receive Christ as their Lord. He says, the tribulation or the end time is not going to happen until everybody's had a chance to know the truth. Now, if they choose to reject the truth, that's something else. But everybody in the world has got to hear this. Everybody. And I am happy to say that it appears that everybody in the world has heard it now. Between uh, TBM. TBM hits 3 billion, with a B, 3 billion people every day with their broadcast. 3 billion. I don't know how many people are in the world, but I think we're reaching that close. Uh, Victory, or Kenneth Copeland Ministries, reaches, I don't even know what the number is, but they reach from the top of the world to the bottom and all the way around. They have their own satellites. 17 satellites. All right? Uh, they are reaching the world in every corner, every nook and cranny. It's amazing to me that anybody comes against Kenneth Copeland and says, oh, he's a horrible person. He's just trying to take everybody's money. He's winning people to the Lord constantly. And by the way, he takes none of your money. <laughs> none. Zero. Victory Network, which is a 24-7 uh, you know, preaching faith. Uh, pastors from all over the place on there, 24-7. He charges no one one penny. He charges no one any money whatsoever, not even a penny to be on that network. I'm telling you, people are reaching the world. You know, and, and people in little teeny churches like ours, and we're not a little building, though, not a lot of people, but they're saying, now that can hope with these horrible. He wins probably thousands of people to the Lord every day. Every day. Along with TBN doing the same thing and others. And we come against them. I would say we should be praying for them. Amen. 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 Supporting them. Amen. That's right. Because of this scripture. I mean, everything that's coming. People say, I, I can't wait for Jesus to come and, and take his church. It's not going to happen until this happens. Amen. And we have people out there that are doing this. And so it's really important that, that we help them and support them. Amen? That's, That's why we have missionaries. That's why we have giving. We give to others as well. So this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. Then the end will come. By the way, this church supports Kenneth Culpa Ministries, Victory Network, Victory Network, and Jesse Duplantis Ministries. Right. We also personally do that. Because they are reaching people constantly. Amen. Millions Millions every year, if not billions. On we go. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads this, let him understand. And let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. And I just stop right here for a minute. The abomination of desolation is when the Antichrist, in other words, somebody that's totally the opposite of Jesus, even though he may pretend to be uh, a savior, uh, he's going to go into the temple that will be built in Jerusalem that's not there yet, by the way. Um, it's interesting, my daughter was saying something, you know, they've been, they've been uh, the countries the, that really cannot stand Israel lately have been attacking them. This last week, they sent over 11,000 missiles over there. Uh, to uh, try to destroy Israel. And it didn't destroy Israel. Most of them didn't hit them at all because they have this iron shield thing they call it that takes out a lot of missiles. But some of them are getting through. And my daughter said something that I, I, you know, I never thought about. She said, you know, we know that Jesus can't come until you know, there's a temple. But she said, you know, they're shooting all these missiles. They don't even know where they're landing. Wouldn't it be something if one landed right on their mosque, that's right where the temple's supposed to be built. <laughs> yeah, there there would be an opportunity to build the temple right down there. <laughs> that could happen. I mean, it could happen today. So, I'll tell you. So anyway, so that's what the abomination 
liberation and desolation, the Antichrist goes in there, sits in the temple, on the throne, and proclaims himself to be God. That's called the abomination of desolation. Now, the Bible says at that point, if you live there, you better be getting out of there because it's not going to be good. Now, in Daniel, it talks about, and in Revelation 2, but it says when that happens, a great eagle is going to fly into, the, into Jerusalem and into Israel, and it's going to pick those people up on its wings and then take them to a safe place called Petra. Petra is a real place. Petra is a, a mountainous area where the mountains surround this huge, huge valley completely so that nobody in there is steep. You can't get in there by foot, okay? Uh, the only way there's just one entrance into, into that place, and it's a narrow way, there's a narrow path to get into that valley, to the mountains, and it's easily guarded. And so they're very well protected. Uh, there's only one country that are allies with Israel that is represented by an eagle, and that is the United States of America. So that gives me hope that we're going to be serving the Lord in this country, because otherwise we wouldn't be sending over planes to help them out. Amen? So it's really interesting to know that. So it says, let him who's on the rooftop not go down to take anything out of his house. Seems to me I'd want to get down. But nevertheless, <laughs> so it says, and let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in the winter or on the Sabbath. It's interesting. Your flight. That could be a lot of different things, couldn't it? Anyway, so it's, in other words, it's telling you, get out of there, because he wants to kill you. All right? And from there will be great tribulation. That's right in the middle of the seven-year period. Okay, that happens right smack dab in the middle. It says, from there shall be great tribulation. There, the tribulation period, as we know it in Revelation, lasts for seven years. But the great tribulation starts at the three-and-a-half-year point. So from there, it says, there will be great tribulation such as not been since the beginning of the world until this time, nor shall ever be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. This is a very important scripture as well. Okay? Okay. Uh, the Bible tells us, and, and we'll get to that, uh, we'll be up here probably later, but what it does say is that, uh, you know, the devil who is down here knows that his time is short. Because of that, he's going to increase the evil taking place exponentially. And uh, where we're seeing that, that take place, we're seeing things happening so quickly now and so much evil happening all at one time. Wondering what's going on. But the Bible says right before Jesus comes, the devil's going to increase what he's doing to, to try to uh, try to stop God from doing what he's going to do. Amen? And try to get as many people away from God as possible. Moving on. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there, do not believe it. For false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Another very important scripture. Because we see many, many, many millions of people being deceived, Christians being deceived. I mean, I would say everybody that ran away from the church, there was some deception right there. Those who didn't come back are definitely deceived. Amen? There's going to be many, many people deceived. We'll get into that a little bit more as well. See, I have told you beforehand, that's what Jesus said. Therefore, if you... See, if they say to you, look, he's in the desert, do not go out or look. He, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Okay, when he came the first time to the earth, he walked around, he fellowshiped with people, he lived with them, he ate with them. You know, he was around, he preached to them. But when he comes back again, the Bible says he's coming in the clouds and it will happen in the twinkling of an eye, it's going to happen quickly. Amen? So if somebody's out preaching, saying you're the Christ, don't believe it. For wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. 
Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heavens, from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. The powers of the heavens means the principality's power, spiritual wickedness. It's not talking about uh, where God reigns, but in where the thunder and the lightning is and everything else. Okay, the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming down the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know the summer is near. How many of you know summer is near? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we had some people from Gaylord there with us yesterday when we were out mushrooming. And they said, you've got leaves on your trees. I said, what? <laughs> we don't have any, have anything over in Gaylord yet. Yeah. Well, you know, we know the summer's coming. We've seen our leaves, right? We know the summer is near. And the Bible is using this as an example of how we'll know when Jesus is coming. When you see the leaves begin to come out and you see things happening, you'll know that the coming of Jesus is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. And surely I say to you, this generation will by no means pass until all these things take place. People have misunderstood this scripture for a long time. Jesus told his disciples that they would not pass away until all this took place. No, he didn't. He had just told what was going to be happening. He said, it's not yet. He was saying, these are going to have happened beforehand, and you haven't even seen them yet, but that's not even the beginning of it. That's not even the last days. So he was saying, the people that see these things, he had just said, when you know that the, the, the summer is near, when you see these things that begin to come to pass, that generation that sees that will not pass away until all these things take yeah. place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But on that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only, the day that Jesus is coming. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark. They did not know until the flood came, that they were going to die, right? And took them all away. So also the coming of the Son of Man will be. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. Why is it saying two will be in the field working, one will be taken, one not? Because not all Christians were created equal. <laughs> Actually, we were. But what's happening is some people say they're a Christian, they, they said the sinner's prayer, they may have gotten baptized at one point in their life, so they think they're going to heaven. But that is not what the Bible says. The Bible says you've got to be serving him, and you've got to be watching for him. You've got to be expecting him. You got it's a, Your life with Jesus should be an everyday thing, every minute thing. When it is that, you won't miss when God comes. You won't miss it at all. It'll be, it'll happen quickly and you'll go. What they call the rapture of the catching away. But some people, because they're so tied into the world, they will they will not go to heaven. You know, they, they, they're going to be left behind. Now they may end up there. Now, I'm telling you, if, if I was here and I wasn't paying attention and I really wasn't serving the Lord that much, but I did know him and all of a sudden the rapture takes place and I didn't go up me, myself, I'd be repenting real quickly. Making sure that I'm going to go on the next train up. You know, the next flight. <laughs> anyway, it uh, says, therefore, you don't know what hour your Lord is coming. Amen. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have not, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. We don't know when he's coming, but we do know that he is. Amen? Amen. And we know that a 
a lot of things are going to happen coming up to that. Amen? I call it our pre-spring. I'm not talking about our weather. But, you know, like Jesus was talking, when you see these things begin to take place, know that summer is near. That's what he was calling pre-spring, you might say. In other words, spring is coming. Things are budding. Summer is coming. Jesus is coming back. And because of that, we've got to be ready because things are going to be happening. Just pop it up. Pop crazy. Okay. They are happening. Amen? And so, uh, we, we need to be ready. You know, yesterday, yesterday was kind of a, a victorious day for most of the nation. Uh, yesterday, all around the nation, people took off their masks. Praise the Lord. Even Michigan said, you no longer have to wear your mask outside even if you're not vaccinated. They also said, if you're vaccinated, you don't have to wear your mask inside either. And so, I mean, the business is in Boyne City. Their signs came down so fast, you must wear a mask. <laughs> there are no people who must wear mask signs anymore. And it happened all over. Everybody think, that's great, things are going back to normal. <laughs> Do not be deceived, church. Things are not going back to normal. And I expect that you're going to see some signs going back up. But it was a good day. Hmm. We were able to go to restaurants without masks. You know, we were able to walk through a carnival full of people without masks. Yeah, yes. And it's been a year and a half yeah. since all that. So, almost a year and a half. So, anyway, uh, it looked like everything's going back to normal. And everybody was saying, oh, it's going back to normal. You know, I hate to say this, but things are going to get worse. Not better. I mean, we had a reprieve for a day. A reprieve for a day. A day. Uh, and there may be a little bit more, but I'm telling you, don't be deceived. There's a lot of things coming down, too. Amen? And uh, we are in a time where things are being set up. Set up for the uh, Great Tribulation, or the Tribulation period, as we call it. And... Uh, Unfortunately, many people, including Christians, don't believe many of the things of Revelation. Daniel, Ezekiel, and the other books of the Bible that said, and, you know, I, I have people say, well, you know, they say, well, you, I have a lot of people argue with me and say, well, you don't know much about end times. Well, let me explain what I know about end times. I started studying end times 51 years ago. I When I first got born again in 1970, uh, I, started, I started reading the Bible. I mean, I was devouring the Bible. But it didn't take me long to get to Revelation. And I started reading Revelation. I thought, I mean, is this in Greek or am I reading in English? I don't understand this at all. So I went to my pastor and I said, can you explain to me this book of Revelation? And he said to me, nobody understands the book of Revelation. Huh. Why would you expect me to? <laughs> and I said, now wait a minute. He says, you're not supposed to. I said, really? So I read it in the scripture and said, no. he who reads and understands this will get a blessing. Yeah. And I said, well, he wouldn't have put that in there if I wasn't supposed to understand it. Exactly. He said, well, I know what to tell you. I don't know anything about it. I went around to everybody. Nobody knew anything about it. So I decided, okay, I've got to study this myself. So that's when I got my first concordance. <laughs> Anyway, I started reading, I started in Revelation, and then I started seeing where else some of this stuff was in, I found out it was in Daniel, because Revelation came from the book of Daniel. When Daniel wrote down all these things, you know, he was writing, he was writing on, on bark, you might say. Yeah, have you ever tried to write on bark? I have. Um, you know, or a scroll, you know, it's all, all wound up. You can only write so long before it's going over the top of your hand, you know, coming back the other way, going over the top. So eventually you've got to take some wax and you've got to put a little dab of wax so it stops. So that part that's up above you is going to stay there. That's the first seal, right? And so people think these seals, wow, there, there's nothing about the seals other than when he was writing it, he could only go so far. That's the first seal. Then he had to break open the second seal. 
and then the third seal, the fourth seal, and all that kind of stuff. So you understand what I'm saying. I mean, that's how he wrote it. And then so everything we see in Revelation came from Daniel, and uh, some from Ezekiel, and Isaiah, and Jeremiah, and a lot of... So I started studying every book in the Bible, every scripture in the Bible, every year. I've been doing that for over 50 years. I know a lot about it. And there is more coming, people. A lot more. And the rapture is going to take place. And it's not going to be UFOs that are going to come and, uh, <laughs> you know, take us away. And, you know, it, it may sound like fun, funny, but, you know, we're talking about this pre-spring thing, getting ready for this whole thing. You know, the government, in the last four years, three, four years, uh, they started, you know, President Trump uh, decided to release all these secret files about UFOs. We we know that we've been visited from other other planets or whatever. Uh, at least we, they think so. Okay. Although if you read Ezekiel chapter one, it describes uh, the, the vehicle, the, the fire the fire chariot, might say that the angels came down to the earth with. They come down on that and then go back up and so on. It describes a UFO. I happen to think that. God just might be using that, you know. And also, it's possible that the devil knows about that as well. He could be using some of that. But I don't think they're necessarily from other planets. It could be. It doesn't really matter. The thing is, they're already preparing a script for what happens when we get raptured. And it will happen, people. So, this is not a time to wait. To decide for Jesus. In other words, decide to give your life to Jesus. You know, I appreciate those who are saying, you know, I'm going to wait on this vaccine until I see exactly, you know, what it's going to do to people, what it's not going to do, and if it's effective, and so on. I appreciate that. I think it's smart. Mm -hmm. Okay? But doing that about Jesus is not smart. Because if you wait, trying to decide if Jesus is real, you're not going to find out any more right later than right now that Jesus is very, very, very real. And he really does love you, and he really does want you to go to heaven. And he is coming after you. If you wait, you're going to miss that. And I'm telling you, if, if you can't say yes to Jesus right now, well, it's fairly easy. It was a lot easier before, but fairly easy. You're never going to be able to when it's almost impossible. The Bible says, and it's true, that they're going to hate you. You know, if all the Christians disappear and you are a Christian, okay, all of a sudden you're a new Christian, guess who's not going to like you? All those who are glad the Christians are gone are not going to be excited about some Christians hanging around still. The Bible says they're going to want to kill you. The Bible says it's going to be required that you take a mark. Everybody's going to have to take this mark in order to buy and sell. Does that sound familiar? You know, I mean, up until yesterday, you know, half the places wanted you to have, make sure that you had uh, your little passport thing to prove that you had a vaccine to go in and, and buy or anything else. Now they don't know who has it, who doesn't. And so and they realize that anybody can just make up a vaccine passport. So they weren't asking anybody going to the restaurant or anything else whether we, you had a vaccine. Well, they have developed what they call an invisible, invisible uh, tattoo that will have your medical records on there, including whether you had a vaccine, and they're trying to get everybody to do it, okay? They've already started in other countries, and they eventually will get everybody to do that. They started out trying to make it easy with a paper, you know, vaccine passport. That's not going to last because people can fake it easy enough. So eventually they're going to ask everybody to have this mark. It's on its way. It's preparing the way right now. Okay? These things are being prepared. And so, if you think it's going to be easier after you see Jesus take the Christians up, it won't be. And you'll buy into that narrative. I'm telling you, every news channel will say, they were not raptured. There's no such thing as a rapture. We had alien visits and they took everybody somewhere. And you'll buy it. I'm telling you, Christians will buy it everywhere. Just like they've been buying everything else that the news media has been saying. And so, 
You know, we, we know that it's going to happen. You think it's going to be easier to receive Jesus in an atmosphere where they're saying, if you don't do what we want you to do and renounce Jesus, we're going to cut your head off. How many people are going to say, okay, well, you know, maybe I'll just take my chances and, and go with you guys instead of Jesus. Well, that's not a very good chance. Because the Bible says, you, there is, there is no way. You can't get forgiven after you get a mark. You know, and you say, I, I renounce Jesus. You can't go back. Yeah. You can't go backwards. Yeah. And you will not spend eternity with Jesus or your loved ones that went there ahead of time. You will not. And so it's not going to be easier. Amen? Yeah. And so we need to understand that. Some of the things that are coming after the rapture, just in case you missed it, very bad wars are going to be happening after the rapture, worse wars, very bad earthquakes, the worst recession in the history of the earth. The Bible says that it will take a bag of gold to buy a loaf of bread. So when we were talking the other day, someone was saying, you used to get 12 loaves of bread for a dollar. Anybody remember those days? 12 loaves of bread for a dollar. And we're talking a bag of gold. For a loaf of bread. Now, either let, bread will be very, very expensive or gold won't be worth anything. <laughs> yes. That's coming. Yeah. And you know what? Right now, the people that, that watch our economy and so on say, we got the greatest recession coming that's ever hit the earth. And already, gas prices are up to $3 a gallon. And it'll probably be a lot more next week, this coming week. But I, I do uh, home improvements. And I'm telling you, lumber is up over five times what it was a year ago. Over five times. Everything is going up. I mean, everything is going up. Whoa, 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 And they say it's inflation. It's greed. But really, where does inflation come from? It comes from greed, really. And so it's happening. Amen? It's already pre being prepared. Everything is being prepared. Much of the population of the earth, when you read through Revelation, if you haven't read through it recently, read through it again. Maybe listen to it even. It's easier. But read it from a, from a different, uh, you know, different uh, text of the Bible, maybe an NIV or something, or uh, something else that might be easier for you to understand it. Because the uh, Bible says much of the population of the earth will be killed by wars, by famine, and by beasts. I, you know, every time I hear that, and by beasts, it really... It really gets me, I'm thinking, by beasts? You're going to be killed by beasts? I mean, think about that. I mean, how many of you have beasts trying to break into your house and kill you? <laughs> I mean, we've seen it on the movies. Oh, wait, we're getting prepared, aren't we? <laughs> but the Bible says it's going to happen. And I know there's been, I mean, you don't know half the experiments that are going on out there. I mean, here's a simple little one. Ticks. Ticks. It used to be, when you lived in a cold area like this, all the bugs died during the wintertime. You know, except for a few that burrowed in, and then all the bugs came back out in the spring, right? Ticks don't die in the winter anymore. I was I was working last winter out in the snow, and here comes a tick walking by me. Oh. I got pictures of it. Oh my God. I'm telling you. Oh. And and you're seeing we're seeing an immense amount of ticks now. My brother went out to uh, get some mushrooms the other day, and he came back with no mushrooms, but a ton of ticks all over him. Oh, I'm telling you. Wow. Uh, things are happening. Yeah. We don't know why or how, but they are happening. Yeah. Amen? So these are things that are coming. In the, during the tribulation period, if you decide you want to stick around until then, uh, there will be much pain, all kinds of pain. The Bible says people are going to get boils on them. Mm -hmm. And... And they will want to die, but they won't be able to. Amen? Uh, there's going to be uh, yeah. these, it says, uh, these insects like scorpions that will sting people. And it will give them great pain for months and months. They'll want to die, but they won't be able to. There's going to be incredible heat. Now, I like heat, but not incredible heat. We moved down to Alabama for a while. And, uh, you know, we love our summers here. 
you know, and go on the lake. And so I was like, we're at 85, 90, you know, something like that, maybe occasionally 100. We got down to Alabama, and I thought for sure I was going to melt that first year. <laughs> I'm telling you, that was what heat. I, I, if that's what's coming, I don't want to be here during that time. Right. Let me tell you, it was bad. It took a long time to get used to that. I did eventually get used to it. But it's still not as good as what we got up here in the There will be great darkness for a long time. And it says even great hailstones. Hailstones that will, can smash a car. Nothing can happen that way. Okay? Uh, and of course, let's not forget the mark of the beast. The Bible says that families will turn against family. Friends against friends. People are going to turn on each other. Does that sound like a great time to be here? No. Doesn't sound like a great time to be. No. And yet people say, well, you know, I'm just going to wait until after the rapture. Then I'll give my life to the Lord. You probably won't. Some people will. In fact, the Bible says many, many will uh, give their lives to the Lord because not only will there be 144,000, and I'm not talking Jehovah's Witnesses, they are actually called Jehovah's Witnesses, but they're not Jehovah's Witnesses the church. Okay? 144,000 people are going to be out preaching to everybody they can to try to win them to the Lord. And God's going to protect them, which is kind of cool. But also, there's going to be angels flying around and telling people. Angels, actual angels flying around and telling people. Um, you see what happened? It's going to get worse. How about repenting right now? And the Bible says people are going to say, oh, get away. I don't want to talk to you. You see an angel flying around telling you it's going to get worse, and you say, eh, I don't believe you. There, there's a problem with that. And so this is not the time to wait. This is the time to say, Jesus, I want you. The Bible says many will be saved during the tribulation, but most will be killed for their allegiance to Jesus. They'll get saved, but they'll also lose their head. Amen. So today is the day to decide that you're going to serve Jesus. And maybe, maybe you've been serving him, or you say you have been, you're a Christian, but how, what does he mean to you? I guess that's the thing. I mean, is he the most important thing in your daily life? More important than your family? People say, well, he's not supposed to be more important than our family. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's supposed to be number one. Number one. Is he more important than your car? More important than your job? More important than your things that you have? Because all those things, if they're more important than God, more important than Jesus, then they're called idols. The Bible says that's not good. Amen? Amen. Anything that's more important than God is an idol. Today's the day to get rid of those idols. Today's the day to give your life completely over to God, completely over to Jesus, and say, Jesus, make me your friend. Make me part of your family. Forgive me of my sins. Wash them away. This is the day to do that. Amen? Make him number one in your life. Let's bow our heads. And I'm talking to everyone here in the church, but also all those that are online. If you've never really, really given your life to Jesus like we're talking today, then you need to. You need to do that. You need to make it number one today. You need to make it a, a decision that will totally change your life forever. For good. For good. Decide that you want to be ready when Jesus comes back because it's going to happen. It's going to happen soon. So repeat after me if you've never given your life to Jesus or if you've not been truly serving him. Let's renew that relationship today. Say, Father, Father. I come to you right now and ask that you would forgive me for my unbelief. Forgive me for not giving my life to you sooner. Completely. I ask right now that you would receive me into your family. I ask right now that you would help me to become a child of God. And become part of the family of God. Jesus, I make you my Lord and my Savior. 
this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you did that today, I want to know about it. I want to give you some, a booklet and maybe some other materials that will help you understand what just happened and what's going to be happening. And so, please, if you're online, please let me know. Um, you can comment on our, on our web page, our, I mean, our Facebook page, which is Fresh Dash Fire Ministries, or, or you can... Uh, you can do a, uh, what do they call that one? Message, a messenger. messenger. Do a messenger to me and let me know. My name is Dave Crumbaugh, Pastor Dave Crumbaugh, C-R-U-M-B-A-U-G-H. Or you can you can uh, call me at 231-497-6028, but I want to know. Or you can just come to the church and tell us. Amen. <laughs> and so I really want to know so that I can help you out. Amen. And I want to know that you're not going to be left here after all this takes place. We are uh, planning soon. Uh, we've been talking about doing some Friday night uh, movies. We did, did a couple, but we well, guess we did one of them. But we want to start doing that. And I want to want to do, because I want to do these, these, and I'd like to find some new ones, but I haven't seen any ones. But these, uh, like Thief in the Night, Distant Thunder, and a lot of those other movies, to kind of remind us about what's really happening. And they're pretty much scriptural. So I think it would be really good. Uh, we watched one last night called Distant Thunder. But I know there's a lot of other ones out there. So we want to start doing that soon on Friday nights. We're not going to start right now. We'll let you know when. But we do want to do that. Thank you again for coming today. God bless you and everybody that looks like you. And uh, have a great week in Jesus' name.